OK, so let's say we've got 5x squared minus x minus 8 all over x minus 2 times x squared plus 1. Now, this example is notable um, because it looks uh, straightforward. But once you kind of realize, oh, although there are just two brackets in the denominator, um, one of them is a quadratic. And then when you delve a little deeper and you think, well, actually, x squared plus 1 is a quadratic that actually you can't factorize, um, we're looking at a, a new type and a new problem of partial fraction here. Because now we have a situation where we have a quadratic term that will not factorize in the denominator. So our initial guess might be that we should be able to write this as a over x minus 2 plus b over x squared plus 1. Okay? That might be our initial idea to this. So if we go through with that, let's, let's see if this comes out with the correct answer. Um, we can multiply both top and bottom by the x minus 2x squared plus 1. So we can have the 5x squared minus x minus 8 is equivalent to a lots of x squared plus 1 plus b lots of x minus 2. So if I now let x be 2, OK, so I'm going to have 5 lots of 2 squared. Take away 2, take away 8, so that's 10. And then I'm going to get 2 squared plus 1, so that's 5, so 5a. The 2 knocks out that bracket, so a must be 2. And, um, well, I can't substitute in a number to knock out that bracket, but I could substitute in x is 0. Because then I've got minus 8 on the left-hand side. I've got one lot of A, which I know is 2. And then I've got minus 2B. So if I get the minus 8, I take away 2, and then I divide by minus 2, I get 5. So B is 5. So what I'm saying is that 5x squared minus x minus 8 over x minus 2 x squared plus 1 should be written as 2 over x minus 2 plus 5 over x squared plus 1. OK, so now it's really our job to check whether this is correct or not when I add these two fractions together. So I'm going to use cross multiplication. So I'm going to have two lots of the x squared plus 1, so 2x squared plus 2 over x minus 2x squared plus 1. plus 5 lots of x minus 2, so 5x minus 10 over x minus 2, x squared plus 1. Now the denominator is the same. We can add the numerators, so 2x squared plus 5x minus 8 over x minus 2, x squared plus 1, which clearly isn't the same. OK? So... There were, uh, once again, you know, there was nothing algebraically that was wrong. It was just that our assumption at the beginning has to be wrong. In other words, it's not necessarily the case that you can say that this must be in that format. OK? The question you've got to ask yourself is, well, why is it that um, when we write out partial fractions... Do we always have the numerators in each of the partial fractions as a constant term, whereas the denominator is a linear term? OK, so, you know, whenever we write these out, um, so in this case, for example, we've got this 2 over x minus 2, the numerator is always one less power of x than the denominator, OK? However, we don't have that for our 5 over x squared plus 1. Because what we must do is we must account for the possibility that in order to keep it an improper fraction, or sorry, a proper fraction, okay, 
In order to keep it like that, we could still have a linear term in the numerator and the quadratic term in the denominator. So we could have a linear term. And so really what we should have done is explored the possibility of the numerator being something like bx plus c, a linear term. Because there is a potential that b could turn out to be 0, in which case we return to the situation from before. So that could still work, but it could have the linear term there, the bx. So b doesn't have to necessarily be 0. So let's see what happens in this situation. Okay. So if we work it through like this, let's see if it works out. So we've got the 5x squared minus x minus 8. And then you're multiplying both sides by the x minus 2x squared plus 1. So a gets the x squared plus 1. And the bx plus c, which must go in a bracket of its own, gets the x minus 2. So now if we let x be 2, we get the 5 lots of 2 squared. Take away 2, take away 8 is 10. So the left-hand side is 10. We're going to get uh, 5 lots of a here. Knocks out that bracket, so a is definitely 2. Now, what can I do? Well, what I can use here to knock out, um, knock out this x is to use x is 0. So if we let x be 0, then we're going to get minus 8 in the numerator. We're going to get one lot of a, so 2. The 0 will knock out the b, so I'm going to add that x. So I'm going to have c times minus 2, so minus 2c. So that means I can take 2 from the minus 8, then divide by minus 2. So c is 5. OK. But I still need to find b. Now, because I've already used x is 0, it makes sense to use another value of x, OK, um, that is quite straightforward to use. So let x is 1, for example. So we're going to get 5, take away 1, take away 8 on the left-hand side, so minus 4. We're going to get 1 plus 1, so 2 lots of a, so that's 4. And we're going to get here b, so b plus c times by 1 take away 2, so minus 1. So minus 4 is 4 minus b minus 5. So minus 4 take away 4 plus 5 is minus 3. So that means that b would have to be 3. So that, now we can say that 5x squared minus x minus 8 over x minus 2x squared plus 1 must in fact be 2 over x minus 2 plus 3x plus 5 over x squared plus 1. OK? So, it might be a good idea to check that this is the case. So if we multiply both sides by the x squared plus 1, so uh, cross-multiply, so 2x squared plus 2. I'm going to do the x minus 2 times 3x plus 5. I'm just going to go it all in one, to bra one bracket. So x minus 2 times 3x plus 5 will be 3x squared. We're going to get a minus 6x and a plus 5x, so minus x. And we're going to get 5 times minus 2, so minus 10 over x minus 2 x squared plus 1. So we get 2x squared plus 3x squared is 5x squared uh, minus x. And 2 take away 10 is minus 8. All over x minus 2, x squared plus 1. So we can see that it's worked. OK? So if then... Um, you wanted to extend this problem, okay, even further, 
to um, something like um, a cortic, for example, in the denominator, if I changed this to uh, 5x squared minus x minus 8 over x minus 2, x squared, oh sorry, not x squared, x to the 4 plus 1. The x to the 4 plus 1 will still have no real roots. It can't be factorised. Okay, You will still be able to write this as a over x minus 2, but you've got to account for the possibility of uh, having any terms of x that are one power up to 1 power less than the denominator. So it could be a cubic in the numerator. So bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e over the x to the 4 plus 1. OK? And you would then have to find a, b, c, d, and e. So this can be extended further than cubics. OK? But we're going to see a couple of examples of this in the next video.